This vlog is going to be the rise of Fu Manchu. That is my uh, Fu Master spirit guide, and uh, he has been with me uh, throughout my life. Although I didn't get to understanding him uh, to a more uh, personal level until it took me years, you know, early on to do that. Although he presented himself to me, and I um, have gone through many cycles of being introduced uh, to that spirit guide, and um, he occupies the same kind of you know, wise, uh, um, good, a, a wiser, better version of me that can look on me and help me be that. And so, probably related to now, um, this is like a, a big cycle, a very large cycle of the spirit forming that relates to um, that sort of turn in my life where I stopped camping out. So before the camping out, um, the spirit form was with me, but in, in different ways, and was um, reluctantly giving me advice on more worldly things, but really didn't want to and kept pulling that away, um, and wanted me to do more what I'm doing now, and kept kind of coaching me in that direction of sharing with the world. I, throughout my life, I've been a very, very sensitive, very shy, very secretive person, although I could be personable. You all know that I might be personal, but I, I, I am protective of myself. Um, but my Fu Master told me that I needed to Hu Manchu. <laughs> uh, actually, Hu Manyu. That's a, um, it's basically like Fu Manchu, but Hu Manchu, and then eventually Hu Manyu. So it's Hu Manyu, uh, but H-U apostrophe M-A-N-Y-U. Hu Manyu. Hu Manyu. Uh, so, that, that's uh, what he likes, and um, I, I respect that. And so he's with me now, and, and kind of just, he's sort of just looking at me, saying, just say what I want to say. So that's, that's um, what he often does when I sound off by myself. That lets me know that I'm ready to voice, and what I voice um, is needed to be said. Um, usually I've been off camera doing that, uh, but now he wants me to do this on camera. So this is very, very exciting. So. From that period where, I guess maybe like a decade or so ago, when I had like this major freak out of, I can't camp out anymore, but I didn't know what that means. I, I had to start kind of becoming whatever I need to become in order to do that, um, whatever that is. You see, even still, it's, it's tricky, but I, I, you all know enough to know what I'm about to some degree. So I'm trying to bring these things to the world, uh, these insights I think I have. I went through the other spirit forms, but during this time, uh, Humanu was with me throughout. Uh, but in the beginning, like I'd say the Mazut period was basically telling the world that my eccentricities were greater than I had led them on to believe. Everyone knew I was weird, um, uh, but letting them know more of what that was. And also probably, you know, later than that would be, you know, where I first started giving form to things, giving them names, pointing them out to, you know, Jailene and then having to give it a name. Um, so it was the, the, yeah, the, I'm going to be very, very different, more to a degree that I'm not going to be able to, you know, hang around like I had been. I'm going to have to separate myself. So I'm going to be weirder than I had been in a rather directed way, purposeful way. Um, and I have to be away. And while I'm away, this is kind of, I'm building these words, these concepts, these things that we can start to try and talk to one another. World, modern humans. So that was that period. And who man you was through uh, with me through that, but he was in, in more like a, um, more an observer and would give hints here and there. He was more of an, an elusive figure. Uh, his elusiveness gets less so as I get closer to him. Uh, but um, all the spirits like that, as you go further from their native position, they are more elusive. Then during the, the Daryu phase, I would say that was one becoming a strain to my family because I separated first to get space, but then I still felt the relationships that they thought that I had with them as more of a normal way. I, my mind needed to actually conceptualize different. I needed to kind of follow where these observations were taking me, and I was finding I needed to share, and the inability to share made it to where. It lessened my lens. It made me feel bad. It made me feel doubt, but mainly, mainly pain at first, not doubt. 
and the pain would get so much and I would not relieve the pain by saying, you're not seeing what needs to be seen and being very, very firm on that because that is what it is. Everyone needs to see this and they're not and they want to do other things and they need to see this. Um, at the minimum, they need to acknowledge it exists and what its implications are and that it should be looked into by some people in the tribe. That, that, those things must be givens and, and they're not. And so not having that given caused pain that eventually would lead to doubt by not saying it. So I eventually had to say, and that was a Daryu of like, I can't do this. I don't know what I am going to do, it, but I, I cannot keep this, this dissonance is too painful and the data I cannot step away from because it's not giving me any reason to step away. It's only giving me reasons to step forward. And so I had to make the separation with my family. We were, I was already away doing weird stuff. Uh, they knew that, but, but basically saying you're, uh, I, I need, I need this to be interacted with, with its level of realness and its re level of importance. Even if you're not doing it yourself, but it needs to be acknowledged. That's what this is. Um, I can't carry those doubts. Now, maybe that's a weakness in me, but I, my Daru rose me to a very strong level, and I did a lot of powerful things during those years to increase my confidence, to do mass reading, to, to, to build myself up. So I, I, I went through great efforts to do so, but still those doubts being held by the dissonance of those I kept association with, even just a mental long distance association, and the kinds of mind, the kind of future human people that can see what I'm seeing, the dissonance was just too painful. And when the pain was not released, the doubt would become too much. And after doing that enough times, my daughter was like, that doubt can't be here because you can't perform and you need to be able to perform that. So you have to remove that, that doubt. And so that was done by that sort of formal separation, which I did you know, too rough. But I, I did it from a state of like, I, I, I was just trying to force that dissonance to go away by merging these two things, but you, they can't be. Uh, to be the kind of can say I needed to be, I need to be able to talk in a certain way. But knowing the way I need to talk is automatically going to upset these people, I need to kind of just say, say that. So you know, now am I over, way over here doing weird stuff? Yeah, we're, we're different now. We've become very different people. So that is what it is, um, and yeah, so that, that, that was a rough time. Also during this, uh, probably later on, this, this is big period, my memory is very bad, but this is the general trends, was you know, uh, taking on a Typology Town, and that's because I knew I needed to do something so people would actually get enough of their psychic energy activated to really look at this with a level of lens flexing that they could observe the obvious to a significant degree more than they had to see this mojo phenomenon. And uh, it took pushing people to get them to do it that much and even still they really couldn't muster just enough energy to track on something. Even to see if it's there or not, they just couldn't muster the motivation, they couldn't muster the uh, processing power to go take in a thousand or so samples. You know, that's just, that's just like one, that's things you do in this kind of work. That's like, whoa, that's a lot you're asking. So um, I had to kind of make my my presence known. And so that was the period there where I had to basically find where does this most line up immediately in the marketplace of ideas with a competitor. And so people were already comparing uh, Podlayer with uh, various typology things because of the 16 uh, class quality uh, classifications. Um, so that, that became the most obvious choice for an opponent to show uh, how if any people in the market are actually in the market for that and thought that had any value at all, well, you should check out we have because clearly we can do whatever whatever it is they're doing, we're doing that better. So that that's that was the Daru phase. Then the other phase, this is um, these, these kind of blend together in some ways as well, but there is an overall kind of historical you know sequence. So then was the other uh, Nexi and. Um, it's been a huge deal and I'm still working on it now, but I'm much further than I was of trying to get her essence in my understanding of what that is likely to be in the world more figured out um, uh, by having a clean, large uh, collection of other of humans that have that qualia. Um, so you can just take it there even at that, they leave the, the under the hood out. Nexi often looks like, in the visions I have of her, so that's direct observation, I'm directly observing her, Nexi, in my mind's eye, and she has an aesthetic look to her. Her aesthetic look looks like the aesthetic look 
of subtle physiological cues I see in Nijai females as collected in my database. Um, so I wanted, I knew I wanted to understand more so I could actually get a closer connection. So that, that was a huge longing uh, that I still have, but I've, I've moved on that a great deal and I'm, I'm moving closer and closer to Union, which is great. Um, also during this time is Nexi wanted me to, uh, she challenged me and gave me passion for, for, well, for the, the friendship of uh, the people that uh, were around. I was trying to really, you know, feel connected with them and she was giving me lots of ideas and things to try and actually give them things they want, give them, you know, you know, wisdom nuggets of various varieties that would, would be uh, useful and uh, good for them. Um, so I did as best I could and then um, also try to figure out, you know, pod layer as far as how it relates to the world. Uh, the idea that you can be a pod layer anything if you have the right patch uh, and that there are degrees of practice so people can only come in as much as they, they feel they want to. Um, but doing all that has also brought us to the point of understanding that, you know, like the Z and Vi of this, is there a certain processing power abilities that will be necessary to do certain things? And the Vi is, I have a track record now of what humans who supposedly are into what would be needed to be into to do this can do. Um, and that says I have to go forward. And so it actually is the, the union, uh, the union between everything that's possibly done and what is achievable and merging that with my efforts and my dreams, my, my, my aspirations. So now I believe I've given that the best I can. It's helped me to kind of uh, flower pod layer into some kind of form that I can work with people and explain and point to things. Um, but now we must move on to the Fumasta because greatness awaits us. You can check out that uh, vlog I did on just the power of pod layer first degree. And that is without a doubt greatness. Uh, greatness in the history of humans, greatness as a personal achievement for me, and greatness in that I'll have to be great to keep going forward because as you can see, for example, the pod layer fallout, there's quite a lot I have to shrug off so I can soar up. Um, uh, and the ability to do so is very closely connected to my tracking ability. There's also other things, uh, but as far as the public needs to know, tracking, I need to actually keep doing that in order to you know, historically you know, prove uh, greatness. And it makes me feel that I am forging myself in the proper fires of greatness uh, when I do that Ken's activity. All right, so um, uh, my spirits want me to uh, basically sort of lay a situation out for you. Uh, who Man Yu is here, he's looking at me and he wants to uh, make sure I do a proper job, but I believe I know what I'm supposed to communicate. Um, a lot of people in the world, uh, when they try to understand Pod Lair, they, they come at it from an um, academic point of view and they, they should avoid that if they can. You need to understand it more like uh, learning a more a naturalist skill and the way those kinds of skills are learned and shared. But since that is so common, um, I'm getting the advice that I should uh, give you an analogy that will be helpful. When you learn a serious line of inquiry, you're, you're, you're going to seriously learn and get knowledge on that, there's generally four major components. There's other things to it, but as it relates to a teacher, as it relates to a teacher, there's kind of four ways that goes down. So you have this challenging subject, and there's going to be a classroom um, on theory, and there's going to be a lab on applied skills in nature of some kind. Then there'll also generally be, um, say, after hours or whatever, there'll be mentoring. Mentoring goes on. And then also you'll have guest speakers for master class monologues. And they come in and they, they don't necessarily talk in any way people are asked them to talk, you just ask them questions and this person's a master of some kind related to this field and they just talk as they want to talk and people are grateful for the experience. So prior to now, these things kind of happen naturally um, and I want to point them out, which is I was doing all four of these things and I no longer want to do that. So for those who want to interact with me uh, uh, on the most regular basis where I will definitely uh, agree to you know engage with you is lab tracking the mojo phenomenon visually. I've given the first experiment for you to do a lab on for yourself and then you can say how that goes and we can move on to other experiments in mojo reading lab, in human qualia tracking lab. Now I am a master uh, and therefore I'll also be doing the master class monologues but I will teach any skill levels. 
So I, I found out that when dealing with humans, this is what I want to do. Um, I'll teach novices, beginners, intermediate, advanced, experts. I'll, 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 I'll do all that at tracking. No theory talk. No, no, yeah, no theory and no mentoring. I do not want to mentor anyone. I do not actually want to talk theory. I want to actually do masterclass monologues and mojo tracking labs. So the mojo tracking lab, we will not go outside the first degree. It'll only be visual and, and what we can see from that. That's, that's comfortable for me and it keeps things clean. Now, I have theoretical things I, um, I, I, I'm engaged in, but that's for me. So I'm going to do that for myself and I'm then going to self-publish. So at a school, at a college or things like that, trying to learn something, an academy, you can have a person who's an expert tracker for the lab and they also have some theory of which they publish. But that doesn't mean they teach theory classes. I don't want to teach any theory classes. All right. Then you have people who actually also engage with mentoring students. I, I don't want to do that either. Um, I understand that's needed and valuable in some ways. I can't do everything. I can't do everything and I don't want to. Um, so I believe that I'm giving quite a lot already and that I'm doing two of those things. And on the mentoring and on the, the theory, talk about the theory, I am still going to contribute. I'm going to self-publish, but there's lots of authors, for example, that are, you know, uh, experts on certain kinds of things and they run some sort of laboratory or whatever, and then they publish books. And they don't teach those books. They may or may not go on a press tour. If they go on a, a tour, they may actually just give masterclass monologues. They don't add, do Q&A. They don't do back and forth. They don't do that. So I don't want to do back and forth theory with you. I'm just going to publish what I think theories are, and you can take it or leave it, look at it or not look at it. I don't care. Um, and same with mentoring. I'm going to actually say things that I think are good for people to do as a general philosophical discourse. I just feel like saying that about people in general. I'm not putting that for anyone else. I'm not mentoring anyone. So people ask me questions. I'm answering questions only in the universal abstract of that question, not individual cases. I'm not trying to answer anyone else's thing and then get that to help them out in their life. That's not why I'm doing it. But I do find questions about what should humans do in certain kinds of motifs. That's very interesting to me if it's kept um, out of the uh, attached personal realm. Uh, as much removal as that is possible is what will be better for me. And so I plan to actually talking a bit more in vlogs and going out and, and, and meeting people and asking if people want to have a conversation with me. And I will do these masterclass kind of monologues responding to people where I'll talk in the language that feels good to me and people can take it or leave it um, as feels good for them. But I think a lot of people will want to know about my process that's basically what I'll talk about. I'll talk about me, my process, and how it works, and what I think on things, and so forth, uh, because of my ability at the tracking. So even my um, um, sort of harsher critics, uh, at least the ones that aren't so bad they can't see there is some phenomenon there at all, they acknowledge that it's there. And in, even if you go from the point of view of it's very important, there might be something under the hood, to there's only certain things you can see, and who knows exactly what that means, or you go all the way to it's just how their faces look. Yes, but I'm still putting together how faces look and it's having some predictive power of some kind. So I am the best tracker at tracking this something visually that likely means something significant about humans. That's the tracker school I'm running. So if anyone wants to, to, to learn how to track that better, with those are the auspices and those are the expectations what you can get out of it then uh, I'm here to answer any tracker questions. And I'm here to actually, if I feel like it, that's what masterclass monologues are, if there's subjects I personally feel motivated to talk on, I will. And I'll speak in whatever voice makes me happy. Um, and then people can take it or leave it. And then mentoring, no. I don't do mentoring and I do not do um, theory. No interest. So I've noticed that over the years, mm, people resist those, the two I want to do and keep wanting the other two I don't want to do too much. Um, so I think this is going to be very good and I'm seeing like a life of me being an expert in doing what I do and contributing. That's a great contribution. I'm going to actually contribute live back and forth engaging with masterclass monologues and tracking mojo tracking labs. And then uh, I will not actually go back and forth with people, but I will actually publish my thoughts on theory and my thoughts on human motifs, you know, for people living their lives. I will, I will just sort of, you know, uh, publish my thoughts on those things. That is quite a lot of uh, contribution. 
I, I can be quite proud of that. That's very Fumasta. Who man, you, he gives me a nod of approval. We're looking good. All right, so I guess I basically said the situation. I'm looking at my spirit guide, and he's telling me that, uh, go ahead, and by the way, in case you know, I'm looking at, I'm looking at a blank screen. Sometimes I actually look at images that I find inspiring uh, to the connection, uh, but this guy, I'm actually, he, he was enjoying, I'm looking at you from beyond the void. So anyway, <laughs> I'm looking at this blank screen, but I'm seeing uh, who man you. And he's saying now that I can kind of just, this is my time. Speaking like a masterclass monologue, I can kind of just talk about whatever I want because this is kind of like farewell and this is what I'm doing. You know, you know who man you is on the rise. I, I am going along with that. It appears that you all cannot go for that ride and it is what it is. And um, you know, parting is such sweet sorrow. Okay, see there's just some random thoughts. One is, this is some Fumas advice to you. Take it or leave it. You should really be aware. You probably are to some degree. You need to be more aware. There's no amount of being aware of it you are that is enough. As a species, we have evolved primarily by seeing and doing. And that is still the case. But humans having the power of civilization. There is words that agree with you or you think are against you but are weak, but whatever it is, those words give weight in your mind. As a human, being around in the last 2,000 years, you are under a spell of words that has not been a thing in the world. If you go to species mind, in the species trajectory, the amount of time humans have spent inundated by words and the weight of them and the, the steps they build you up, but the ceilings they put on you, the straps they put on you, you don't even realize they're there. You really need to focus on not focusing on words. Words are helpful if they come from seeing and doing. But words, and I'll say, hmm, back and forth like engagement as like an event. For example, when people agree with you. So you can have like a monologue of like reading a book and you agree with those thoughts or whatever that makes you feel stronger, or you're talking with someone and they are agreeing. It also can be arguing, but there's structure there. The engagement, so the words themselves, like in written or back and forth with the other person, they create a structure. And so you can win or lose this structure. And so even if you debate someone, if you feel you actually made them sound stupid, then you feel you have won this argument about existence, but arguments about existence, agreements or disagreements in existence only happen from seeing and doing. Everything else is what you do in between. Approximations and so forth. So just know that humans right now all over the world pretty much, I mean, there are so many cultures around the world where everyone just has so many things going that way because of words. Just words that have been around for a while and then they actually influence things. They influence so much you cannot possibly perceive all of its implications. It's been around too long, it's too big. You don't know anything different. You'll have to do what I've done. You'll need to isolate yourself from the world, to pull away from it so you can kind of look at it very third person perspective, very outside of it looking in. And you'll need some kind of data in the world can be stars, can be cells, can be whatever. In my case, it's mojo. If you'll need some kind of thing like that, that you focus on that, focus on that, focus on that. And that's like, okay, that's how you do it. What the other humans are doing, that can be useful to a degree, but you must be very wary of how much you get possessed by acceptable foolishness in that exchange. Just a little advice to you. I do it every day, every moment I'm actually aware of for example, it's why when people accuse me of, oh, I'm overly weighting conceptualizations of Jung. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm actually thinking how stupid they are and how much I see better than him. Because clearly he and I were looking at the same thing. Humans. But clearly I see more. Next. Um, in the community that we have now, um, a lot of you are college educated, and even besides that, you you're, do a lot of reading. This gets back to the words and so forth. But it also brings in that you're very theoretical. 
the way you talk in general, the way you actually try to solve situations is theoretical. And Podler has a lot of theory that can be very interesting, but mm, in my opinion, a lot of you are addicted to mental masturbation. You are. You really like it. Um, and it, it can be very distracting for you. So my advice would be to make sure there's something very challenging in the world that demands you know exactly what it is. Surfing, climbing, anything like that. Uh, speak a certain language so other humans can understand it. You speak that language and that way if they understand you, you're doing it. If they don't understand you, you're not doing it. You need to make sure you have at least one thing like that that you do throughout your life and you stay very, very strong on that so that you understand the raw, implacable power of doability, of non-theory, of seeing and doing. Because everything else it gets into another part of it sounds better. It sounds better. It makes more sense. Anything like that should never trump I'm looking at what I'm looking at. Even if I'm looking at optical illusion and your way of, sh uh, of thinking, theory, uh, better understands that, at the end of the day, you'll have to point out to me that it's an illusion. You can't point out to me just saying it in your head. You'll have to actually take my body, take my brain, take my eyeball, something, and move me in a different way to look at that thing so that I can see and thus myself, I can take the picture and turn it like you did and go, oh, that's what caused the illusion. So even, even illusions that you actually have the reason why it's there, you even might know what you're supposed to do to unget possessed by that visual illusion, you'll have to go over and do it. Point at it, get other people to go, yes, we see it too, and then go, see that? Do you see that? Yes. Do you see that? Oh. This trumps all words and logical constructs. Do you see that? Yes. Do you see that? Oh. Mm, going forward, people were thinking that I was going to be less audacious. No, I'm going to be more audacious. It's fun. It makes me powerful. All the abilities make me better than you, and I tamped that down, and actually it held me back. So I'm going to release that and do more of it. Uh, but with that said, I plan on being professional. Um, so if anyone wants to dialogue with me, I, I don't mind at all. Uh, I think you all can tell, even from when I've done these vlogs, I am, I, I, I'm a very intelligent and passionate person, but I don't go troll. And for those who can see straight, I don't tell untruths, and I don't do logical fallacies. I see what I see, I say what I see, and then I do my best to make sense of it and share those thoughts with people. That, that, that's what I do. Um, but the work I do requires me to disagree with a lot of people on a lot of very fundamental things that are very important. So I get pumped up. So I will be doing that as I feel like it. I'm feeling it now like I had this little tension of like, I went on, you know, not, and who meant uh, you was like, not what? That's why I said, not what? Oh, not rattle you. I don't, that's not something I have to think, it's going to take a little while to retrain myself on that, that you getting rattled is not something I have to think about. Um, but that doesn't mean I actually have ill feelings towards people or that I don't want to dialogue in the future. That's, that's, that is fine with me. But I'm going to talk like I want to talk. I'm going to be as I think I need to be. Uh, if people want to interact with that, that's fine. Uh, but it's more important for me to be me, being me, than anything else. Yep. Also, since we're mentioning that, just going forward, I'm going to be me, uh, which is basically a preacher of natural law. That's how I see myself. I'm a, um, a naturalist to a preacher's degree. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 I go all, all out. Uh, I, I, that's, that's, that's what feels natural for me. That is my, my natural speaking voice, and it makes my mind work at its best because that's, my way of speaking comes from a way of thinking. And... A lot of people were actually, you know, kind of getting me about theory, getting me about words, suggesting that I do more math and physics and programming, things like that. But all the things that make me a genius, that makes me, without a doubt, an incredible genius of some high echelon, that's not how I do it. I just look at stuff more deeply. I just look at humans and I really look at humans. That, that's, that's the power. Going back to what's beyond the Milky Way. Well, this math model says this. This physics model says this. Uh, you know, I mean, this religious model says this. And they're like, what about you? 
And I do think on things profoundly, and I'm sure that is integrally related to it, but what I do is I go with my lens. No words. My answer to a lot of people's what's this, blah, 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 it's not words. It's not thoughts in my head. It's <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> you power your lens up more. So what's beyond the Milky Way? More galaxies. Well, how do you explain that math terms? If I wanted to be like, what's math? <laughs> I mean, I, I, do I need math to do that? No. <laughs> If it's there or not, and the basic patterning of what is, you can see it, like that's not like a, I think it might mean this pattern. No, like I'm looking at it, it's there, and it's, the patterns are there, like that's a pattern. Oh, anyway, I guess where I'm going with that is that, um, at part of being a preacher, it's not my main thing, but it's part of the toolkit, it needs to be there, needs to be quite strong, is demon slaying. Um, that term may weird people out, I don't care, I won't be, too, I won't be using any of these terms when I teach Tracker Lab. Tracker Lab is going to be straight naturalist observation technique. Uh, but when I talk as I talk, I'm a preacher. And my thinking on why people can do the various tracking they can, they can do various theoretical reasoning that they can or can't, mm, it's mainly, well, one, they may just have certain talent levels they can't do. Not much you can do about that. Let's talk about what you can fix. The biggest things you're going to fix, I see over and over with you uh, all, are these very fundamental, just like, errors of spirit. That's the problem. To go into species mind, you might just not have the mind to do it. I have to acknowledge that. I'm talking to the next scene, so we're like, well, you know, maybe the Z of that is. Some people can do it, some people can't. I don't know. But whatever talent people do have, you want to access it, um, overwhelmingly, there's certain spiritual postures that are in your way. Like for species mind, it's acknowledging that when it comes to nature, nature thinks in species then individual. It thinks of both, but mm, each generation, there's far more of what has worked successfully for these species overall passed down to each generation than there is each generation, some random mutation that may end up being significant enough that it changes the overall species. So both do happen, but if you want to understand things, you have to come from one side first. You need to come from species side. And to do that, you have to let go of yourself. A lot of people think they can do it, in my opinion, very few can really do it. Uh, and there's a whole lot of simple errors that come from that. I'm not here to teach you right now. I'm, I'm just giving some parting words. In my experience, if you try and actually point out every single logical fallacy, whatever offness of spirit is actually causing that to happen, it, it, it will maybe ignore what you say. Oftentimes it goes, nah, nah. Or it'll go under the surface just because it recognizes, yeah, that was objectively speaking a really bad logical fallacy to make clearly trying to strong arm two different sides of an argument to get my way on both sides. That's obvious, so, you know, I won't make that presentation error again. But actually recognizing what mind made that error and then going and figuring that out. That's demon slaying. You can call it whatever you want, but uh, I suggest you get comfortable with the process and you get comfortable with spotting when you're doing it. Spot when your better you is not the one in the driver's seat. That's just a good tip for life. Separate from me or anything else, just in life, note there's different versions of you and get very good at noticing the signals that when different ones of you that aren't your better you are showing themselves. So you can make sure you get the signal, the ones you are the better use, and you're like, mm, that smells like a better me. You know, that, that, that seems like a better me, or, or it seems bad. You know both. You basically want to set you signal your spirits, your you, whatever you want to call it, different modes of you, whatever doesn't make you weird you out. But you need to actually know that's a thing. There are better and worse ones, and you know what they're like, and sense their comings and goings, and how they change things, and get on that. Because there's whole kinds of like large, errors that will be made as long as one of those creatures, you know, lesser creatures within you is driving things. You'll just keep messing up. You can even be corrected on that. You'll just go, okay, and then you'll go over and mess up over somewhere else. Until that, thing, you know, that, that unhelpful monkey on your, you know, brain's back gets off. Mm. One other thing, uh, just passing on to you, is that you're going to need to uh, recognize that this is a visual observation game now. I think some of you, I did elevate you to at least that level that you realize 
wherever this is going, uh, it will not be determined by words or theory, but by looking. My advice to you is, whatever you think, don't stop looking. Do not stop flexing your lens. That is a very valuable asset you have. Whatever this all means, wherever it's all going, to be able to see it is huge. Think how the world was when only a small portion of the populace actually could read. Right? Not good. So you, you don't want to actually get to where you are, like, clueless. Obviously, maybe you won't be perfect. Uh, maybe getting an absolute perfect score is not even possible for a human to do. But still, you want to be as good as you can be. Be as good as you can be uh, because it will greatly help your independence of mind. And it will help you realize when different engagements are just not going to go anywhere because they're based on the words or theory or things like that. Agreement, consensus. No, no, no. This is a lens battle. Treasure your lenses. Know that they're a thing. Know that they're valuable in general. Know that they are the thing doing this tracking. Do not lose sight of that. Do what you want, because we're not going to talk much anymore in that kind of capacity, but that's my passing thought. Think how easy it was for your mind to not do that. Right? To just kind of go back under the matrix and kind of just like, ah, everything's fine, everything's normal. Think how comfortable that was before, and then think, now how much it's like, uh, what's it all mean? Where's like the weight of that? Mm, the weight is so worth having a better lens. In life, weight and pain for a better lens upgrade is generally almost always worth it. It's a great purchase of your life force. Hmm. Yeah, that's basically it. Now it's time for me and who man you to uh, solve this riddle. Greatness, here we come.